Dear friends and colleagues, welcome back to the Mangano Digital Academy. In this lecture, we will talk about the intraoral scanner, very important devices for the data acquisition, for the 3D data acquisition in digital dentistry. And we will start from the most important thing, the trueness of the, the, the intraoral scanner. So the question we will try to answer today is, what is the trueness of an intraoral scan? because we should refer, obviously, to the intraoral scan itself and not to the scanner. There are a lot of variables that need to be considered. And uh, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about the intraoral scanner. The intraoral scanner, they emit a light source. Usually it's a structural light grid or sometimes a laser, a laser uh, on the teeth surface. And then they capture its modification through powerful cameras. And the, the collected data are then used to calculate the spatial coordinate at each point of teeth surface. And a powerful 3D reconstruction software generate point clouds that are then triangulated into meshes. So what we obtain is a mesh. As we can see here, we have a, a point cloud that then is triangulated, interpolated into a polygonal mesh. And then we have our standard tessellation language file, the STL. So basically a structural light grid with uh, known geometric properties is projected onto the object to be scanned, usually uh, the, 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 the model of our, um, the, uh, our, t uh, our patient model. And uh, uh, then uh, this uh, grid undergoes a deformation. This deformation is captured by the cameras. The cameras send all information to the software and the software re-elaborate uh, thanks to very powerful algorithm, a point cloud. And then this point cloud is used to construct a polygonal mesh through a process that is called interpolation. So a mesh is a set of triangles. Usually we talk about triangles that form the external surface of the scanned object. So we are talking about a 3D reconstruction of the surface of the object, obviously, and uh, not the whole object. We are talking about surface reconstruction. But the question is, is this uh, surface reconstruction really re reliable for us? Can we really trust it? I mean, is it uh, accurate enough or there are any deviation between the reconstructed and the actual surface of the object? This is the question because it is the most important question. What is the error? Is, is it possible to run into errors during the scan? And um, basically, the, the, the answer is yes, of course, we have a several kind of possible error and uh, we have a systematic error and uh, the, the trueness is the estimate of the systematic error. And then we have also a random error and precision is the estimate of the random error and together trueness and precision, they um, give the final accuracy, accuracy of the, of the device, so the, 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 the total error of the device. And uh, we need to consider that um, uh, yes, accuracy is a sum, a sum of trueness plus precision. So the trueness is the estimate of the systematic error. And we need, uh, of course, uh, a reference value or a true value if you want to evaluate trueness, because uh, we need a, a, the true value or maybe a reference value that must be very close to the true value, because uh, otherwise it's not possible to, to, to determine the trueness of a model, for example, a dentate model. Obviously, a reference value has uncertainty, but usually a very small one, so it can be considered a reference from, for us. Because it's not possible to, unfortunately, it's not possible, it's not applicable to use uh, uh, machines with certified accuracy, like, uh, for example, articulated arms or industrial optical scanner inside the patient's mouth. Um, having a certified reference file is not possible uh, for us in vivo. So measuring the trueness of the optical impression with intraoral scanner in vivo is quite tricky, it's difficult because of the lack of this reference. Some colleagues try to introduce some devices inside the mouth with known geometric properties in order to have some reference, but it's not so easy to calculate them. Uh, precision is something different. We will talk about precision in details later in, in one of the next uh, lectures. Uh, for determining precision in vivo, it's not necessary to have a, a reference value. So we simply can take, for example, 10 uh, scans of the same patient and then superimpose them and we can see if there are variation, if there is a random error 
and then precision is the estimate of this error. But let's go back to the trueness because trueness is much more important, it's probably the most important thing and it's the key factor in determining the accuracy. So trueness is the ability of a measurement to match the actual value of the quantity being measured. So as we can see from this graph, it's really pretty clear that trueness and precision, they cooperate in determining the final accuracy, but uh, of course in one we can have a model that we can have a, an intraoral scanner for example that is highly true but is uh, uh, possess a low precision or we can have a situation like with a very low trueness and high precision. Obviously what we want to achieve is high accuracy because with high accuracy we can really trust in our model and we can use our model for clinical purposes very well. So the point is to have high trueness and high precision at the same time. It's key in order to work well with intraoral scan. Accuracy is defined also as the closeness of agreement between a measured quantity value and a true quantity value of a measurement. And the trueness in particular is defined as the closeness of agreement between the arithmetic mean or large number of test results and the true or accepted reference value. So we are talking about uh, um, something that is really important for the, the evaluation of the quality of a, of a mesh or 3D surface reconstruction because uh, uh, if the 3D surface reconstruction is true then it is a reconstruction that is reliable clinically. But as I have anticipated you before, uh, um, to evaluate trueness uh, we need a reference and in case of uh, dental models uh, this is usually an acquisition made with uh, a very uh, accurate machine like an industrial optical scanner with a certified accuracy of less than 5 micrometers or maybe a coordinate measuring machine. So something that is really reliable in capturing data of an object and so we can compare our intraoral scans with those data in order to evaluate if our scans are reliable or not, if they are true or not. Precision is instead the closeness of agreement between measured quantities values obtained by replicate measurements on the same objects, so under specified condition. So it's a more a closeness of agreement and deviation between test uh, results. So we don't need a reference in vivo to evaluate the, the precision because it is sufficient to compare different measurements, different scans made in the same margin and under the same conditions at different times in order to evaluate the deviations between them, among them. Uh, anyway, we need to be very clear when we talk about intraoral scanner and we talk about precision, we talk about accuracy, we talk about trueness, we are not talking about the final clinical precision of our restoration because in prostodontics uh, this term clinical precision refers to the whole workflow, I mean the marginal gap of a restoration. And so this marginal gap should be ideally between 25-30 micrometers, some motors also go until 100 micrometers. But the point is that if we, if we talk about uh, the fit and the marginal precision of a crown, then we are talking about the wall phases of uh, the digital workflow. So this uh, results is determined by several phases, the scan phases of course, but also the plan phases how we uh, manufacture our crown, for example, how we cement our crown. So we, we need to consider that uh, our definition of trueness and precision related to the scans, related to the scanner has nothing to do with the final clinical precision because the final clinical precision depends by more factors uh, at a different level of the workflow. So it's very important to consider this. And when we talk about trueness, uh, we'd better refer to the mesh instead of the intraoral scanner itself because obviously there can be also deviations, some kind of, uh, I mean, uh, standard deviation among the different meshes of the different object captured with the same uh, intraoral scanner. So it's very important to say that uh, the final trueness of an optical impression of a mesh of a 3D surface reconstruction 
depends not only on the intrinsic accuracy of the intraoral scanner. Of course, it depends by the scanner, but not only. There are also other factors, for example, the operator, the experience of the operator, the strategy, the scanning strategy are very important. Also, patient-related factors are quite important. For example, the number of uh, um, remaining teeth, for example, we all know that a full, uh, completely dentulous patient is much more difficult to scan than than um, a dentate patient and the environment, the light condition. And are, there are also some additional components, for example, in implant prostodontics, we talk about the scan body. So everything together contribute to define a trueness. So it's much better to define trueness as a, um, an element of the mesh itself and not the element of the scanner, even if the, the scanners, different scanners have different trueness, of course. So when we talk about implant impression, for example, as I told you, yes, there's the scanner that is important because there's an intrinsic accuracy of the intraoral scanner, but also there are other factors, the operator, the strategy, the experience, the patient, number, for example, inclination, depth of the implants, the environmental condition, light temperature, the scan body, that is a very important factor in determining the final accuracy of uh, implant impressions, particularly in the case of full arch implant impression, and then the congruence that is a topic that we will um, 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 treat and face in, in detail in one of the next uh, lectures. So there are uh, several factors, not only the intraoral scanner. Anyway, I think that uh, the intraoral scanner is the number one factor we should consider. So we, what is the trueness? of full arch implant impression because it's uh, very often the colleagues pose me this question because it's considered very important and uh, um, of course it's uh, the most difficult application for the, the, the use of the intraoral scanner but it's very important and uh, an hot topic I would say also in literature. And I have uh, conducted with along with Professor Oleg Makin and the team of researchers cooperating with me this very interesting research uh, published last year in the BMC Oral Health uh, and it's uh, basically a comparison of 12 different intraoral scanners in the full arch implant impression. It's an in vitro study because as I told you it's very difficult, it's quite tricky to perform an in vivo study of the trueness of intraoral scanner and model generated by the intraoral scanner if we don't have a reference and of course in vivo we don't have any reference file. So basically we compared um, these uh, 12 uh, intraoral scanner and uh, we um, captured 10 models uh, with um, each one of these uh, intraoral scanner. We compared this model with a reference model captured with a very powerful uh, desktop uh, the scanner. We superimposed the model using different techniques, a mesh to mesh techniques a NURBS to NURBS technique in order to understand uh, something about the overall trueness uh, of the different um, model captured with the different scanner. We wanted to understand if there, 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 there was some statistically significant difference among them, but at the same time we decided to calculate uh, the linear and, uh, and, uh, and cross distances between the uh, the centroid of the scan bodies in order to have uh, really reliable data because we all know that uh, uh, with the progression of the scan the error grows and um, therefore it's very important to consider this factor uh, the, 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 the progression of the error is not linear and so it's important also to evaluate the linear distances between the different scan bodies. And uh, basically these were the machines that we have evaluated, ITRO Elements 5D, Prime scan from Densply Sirona and Omnicam from Densply Sirona, uh, CS3700 and CS3600 from Kerstin Dental, Trios 3 from the Tree Shape, uh, um, the Medit scanner, then uh, two scanner from the Plameca Emerald S and Emerald, Virtuo Vivo and uh, DWEO um, from the Dental Wings, and uh, then the Run Eyes uh, Chinese scanner. And uh, all this kind of use different technology for the acquisition of the data, of 3D data, and also for the um, making the, the, the mesh, so the different algorithm for the interpolation. So it's very interesting to evaluate the differences between these different scanners. This was the reference model uh, prepared for me for, from um, 
uh, in the laboratory of uh, Master Dental Technician Uli Oshield. It was a situation that is quite tricky clinically, so a full arch maxilla with six implants. The implants were quite parallel to each other. These uh, scan bodies were uh, um, from the Megagen company. And uh, this uh, model uh, was scanned a few times with a very powerful and certified uh, um, reference desktop scanner. It's a desktop scanner with a very high accuracy, the DOF. And uh, then we captured different uh, models. We chose one model, the best among all these models, and we considered it as a reference. And then I captured in person 10 scans with each one of these uh, different intraoral scanner in order to generate around 120 uh, models uh, from the different intraoral scans and then we superimposed, we compared basically all these models with the reference model uh, by means of a reverse engineering software. So the comparison was made uh, with through two different systems, uh, uh, mesh to mesh a direct superimposition between the two meshes and then a nerves to nerves technique. The nerves to nerves technique is quite different because and I think it's more interesting because uh, before to make the superimposition we replace the library for each scan body inside every single mesh, captured mesh. It's a very long work, very difficult but very important in order to get a very good information about the quality and the trueness of the intraoral scanner. So, the scanning strategy was almost the same for all the scanners in, in the same uh, where the condition, the environmental condition. I used this uh, zigzag technique that is uh, quite, uh, I mean, established in the world of um, intraoral scanners. And uh, we performed then the superimposition and we evaluate the overall trueness with a mesh to mesh method and then the overall trueness with a nerves to nerves method. With the nerves to nerves methods, as I told you, the library file of the scan body provided by the implant manufacturer was superimposed to each of the six scan bodies present in each iOS scan mesh. And then for each iOS scan, a new file was generated and obtained with only the six implant scan bodies library file in a position in the space free. This position was derived from the original mesh. And the same procedures were repeated for the reference mesh and then we superimposed. So basically it's uh, uh, a different way to evaluate the, the overall trueness of the models. And this is how it works with the mesh to mesh technique. In this short video, we can see the reference file and we can see the intraoral scan. We can uh, um, use the reverse engineering software. First, we pick a few points uh, corres in, in corresponding part. We have a rough alignment. And then we launch the algorithm for the best fit is uh, an iterative closest. Uh, uh, point algorithm, very powerful, uh, then a uh, point to plane method is used to stabilize the superimposition and then we can generate also a colorimetric map with the threshold that we want. In this case we, say, we see that the green is very good results because it's less than 30 micron deviation and uh, for the other color we have deviation of course. This is the mesh to mesh, so we have repeated this uh, work uh, 120 times. And this is the, the, the superimposition nerves to nerves. As we can see, we have uh, the position of the libraries from the one side on the left, the, 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 derived by the um, uh, reference um, acquisition with the desktop scanner and on the other side, the right, derived by, by the um, intraoral scan. And then we superimpose it. So basically here we have a superimposition of library files but in the position given by the mesh. And once again we have this situation with green that is good and um, blue and uh, light blue and then uh, pale blue. They, they are not good enough because there are deviations. And here the, in this table we can see the overall trueness and there were a lot of, uh, I mean, uh, there was evidence of uh, statistically significant differences from this table as we can see here because some machine like the CS3700 and the uh, ITRO Elements 5D they performed particularly well in, in, in the evaluations in this evaluation and as we can see we have a group of scanners that are I mean very uh, true very accurate and this scanner are uh, the ITRO Elements 5D the, um, the, the prime scan Three or three, the two, the two scanner of uh, Kerstin Dental, CS3600 and CS3700, that they are very, very accurate. And uh, 
Of course, there were some deviations among the mesh-to-mesh -mesh and the nose-to-nose -nose evaluation, but more or less, I could say that this scanner, the, the, the six scanner that I, I cited, they, uh, they worked very well in terms of trueness, overall trueness. And as we can see here, uh, very little deviations uh, comprised among 25 30 micron for itero elements 5d the care stream scanner and and the made it scanner for the mesh to mesh evaluation actually the the best results were obtained by cs3700 in this kind of evaluation the mesh to mesh for the overall trueness for the nerves to nerves evaluation the best results were obtained by itero elements 5d very interesting that is less than 17.5 micron of deviation on the full arch. So we are talking about very little error compared to what we could achieve even five years ago. I mean, the trueness is clearly um, much better. In this case, we use the reverse engineering software and what we are talking about is the absolute deviation. So we are not talking a senior mean, we are talking about the absolute deviation. Anyway, there are also other methods to evaluate the, the overall trueness that can be also more reliable, like the root mean square um, or the 90 minus 10 for, um, and divided per two uh, method that are uh, two more recently introduced methods that I didn't use in this study. Anyway, overall trueness revealed a statistically significant difference among the different scanner with the mesh-to-mesh -mesh method. And these were, in this um, figure, you can see the best results achieved with the different, with each one of the, of the scanner uh, for the mesh-to-mesh -mesh method. As we can see, we have very good results. Anyway, for the best scanner, less than 30 micron error. And uh, here the table summarizing the results with the nurse to nurse method, once again, statistically significant differences between the different machine. And uh, once again, a figure that summarizes the, the results, the best results achievable with the different scanner. The best results uh, achieved in the whole study was a nine micrometer deviation in the full arch with the CS3600. And it's impressive because nine micrometer of deviation it's very little, it's something that is almost perfect. We rise perfection here. But also with ITRO, the results were excellent. The prime scan with CS3700, there are very little deviation. I mean, everything is very satisfactory. And uh, what we can achieve now was not possible to achieve even a couple of years ago. And I conclude with the linear measurement because it's very important, as you can see, to consider the progression of the scan. And we evaluated linear and also cross distances between the center of the centroids. And of course, the cross distances we expect with, with the cross distances, we expect uh, uh, huge errors because of course the, the, the distances are, are, are huge and uh, the error can be of course higher in these cases. And it was so actually. So we collected all measurement with the reference model and then we compared the, this measurement, these values with the values obtained with the distances of every single scan captured with the different intraoral scanner. We are talking about 120 meshes in these cases. Of course, we had to replace uh, the library files inside the mesh in order to make this evaluation correctly, because this evaluation can be made automatically by the software only on a library file in which the, uh, the centroid of the, the scan body is automatically found by the, by the software. And once again, we had, of course, statistically significant differences between the different scanner. And uh, obviously, we had a higher variation, higher dispersion of the error for the cross distances. It was expected. But anyway, more or less, we had this uh, group of leading scanners capable to guarantee best results, like the Kerstin scanner and also the, the Prime Scan, the Trios, uh, the, the, the Made It itself. And, uh, uh, ITO elements 5D. So these were the scanner capable to grant the, the best results in, in the different application. And uh, of course, there were statistically significant differences in terms of trueness uh, among the linear and also among the cross distances uh, between the different intraoral scanners. So if we consider the first variable of the graph, the intraoral scanner, then we need to say uh, we need to admit that there are statistically significant differences among the different scanners. So the scanner is a factor, the scanner is a very important factor in our workflow and we need to choose the proper scanner, particularly for some kind of difficult application like uh, the full arch scan. As we can see here, particularly 
the, the, the results in the, in the cross distances are, I mean, um, difficult to achieve and with the best scanner you can, we can limit our error and we can achieve a higher accuracy. So the conclu conclusions for, from this study is that there were statistically significant differences in trueness between different intraoral scanners. So the factor scanner exists because some intraoral scanner like CS3700, ITRO Elements 5, Prime Scan made it trios and CS3600 granted more suitable results uh, for the full arch impression. So they should be used for this particular application. This represents a specific indication for this clinical application. Obviously, different evaluation methods determine different results uh, and there are also limits, intrinsic limits in this study. It's an in vitro study, but of course we cannot perform any in vivo study actually with this uh, um, for the trueness because it's quite difficult, it's tricky to introduce a reference object inside the mouth. Maybe the scanning strategy used here, the, the strategy may have favored some scanner over the others. The use of a desktop scanner can be, um, I mean, a critical point, but in this case, it's a scanner with a certified accuracy of less than five microns. So uh, we are talking about a desktop scanner that is very powerful and very similar in terms of result with an industrial optical one. And the other limitation of this study is that we didn't start from the same <coughs> scan body in all the scans. So the, we couldn't evaluate uh, uh, perfectly the scan progression and they're related to the scan progression, but it's a limitation of this study and we will try to overcome this limitation with the next studies. So thank you very much for your kind attention. I'll be very happy to receive your comments, uh, your criticism, your questions. You can write me here. Uh, please uh, keep following me in uh, the Mangano Digital Academy social channels. And um, thank you very much for your kind attention.